Hey guys, my name is Sanjay Raj. In this video, I want to teach you the main JavaScript validation methods for HTML forms. So I've got three main validation methods that anyone has to use if they're using a form whether it's in a normal website or anything. Let's just get started. So any form validation that you want to use, you always want to listen for a click on a, of a button. So that's the main part here you always don't want to miss that which normally people do if they're beginners so how do you do it i just got a normal uh, html uh, layout here which is going to be an email input password inputs and a submit button so i want to get the button uh, into javascript i'll say const button equals document dot query selector i'm going to select the submit button and then you want to listen for a click so you add an event listener what is it that you want to listen click and in terms of that you want to make a function and the main thing when it comes to form validation is that every time you click on the submit button as you guys see right here every time i click the page refreshes that's exactly what you don't want because if you put an email maybe you're using a database system if you're using an email then a password if you click on submit it's not going to go to the database because the form is not actually going to get submitted so we want the to, we want that to be prevented that's exactly where a function comes in called prevent default so how do you use it right here if you're using a function like this or any other function you just want to put e in the functions uh, brackets right it can be an event or it can just be e which is going to be more like uh, convenient so you always want to make sure e dot prevent default function is always set right after that we want to get into the first validation method which is going to be a password validation method so uh, it's going to be a range check how do you use a range check in form validation the way you use it is to check if the password uh, is for, of a given range to a given range so say from 0 to 30 in this base tutorial you guys can use any number you want it's based on your websites like convenience and stuff so let's get started with validation number one validation one F for validation one validation one so for validation one you need the password input so I'll just say const uh, password equals document dot query selector and then we want to get the password so right here in the validation you want to put an if statement you want to check if the password dot value dot length is greater than 30 if this is true then we want to alert the user these are all functions right we can alert the user saying that the password password length is more than 30 characters and that's the first one let's check if that works so I'm just gonna type in lots and lots of values and then click on submit okay there's something wrong I really want you guys to figure this out because always in Visual Studio Code if you're using this when you put in value the default one is going to be node value so most of the time computer people programmers are right in front of the computer so they don't understand what's actually going on so you want to make sure that this is value and not node value so if now i submit with a lots and lots of words more than 30 if i click on submit it says it's more than 30 characters and that's validation number one so if we see validation number two it's going to be validating the email so how do we validate the email we want to check always when there's an email submission we want to check if the emails are right so how do we check if the email is right the main parts of the email are the at symbol it's going to be this and dot and dot com so to base this off of easy as easy as possible in javascript there's something called regex so i cannot make a, like a tutorial right here if you guys really want that then make sure to comment below then I'll make sure to make a video on that right here where what you want to do is you want to make a const variable and make that regex equals to this so what does this mean 
this actually makes some invisible code yeah it's actually an invisible code i think uh, and checks if the email contains some main parts which is as you guys can see a at symbol and then some numbers and brackets and all those kind of stuff if it contains that then yes it's an email so you want to put if the so you want to get the email for this don't want to miss that so you want to make a const variable of email saying document dot query selector dot email want to get that want to check if the email dot match if it matches not matches want to check if it matches the match email so if it does match we want to just console log because it's returning a positive uh, result um, I'll just say good if it does not work what do we want to do we want to alert the user alert is a function want to alert, alert the user in valid email uh, you should also make that a string so if I just put random text why doesn't it work so you want to check if the email dot value dot match you want to check if the value of email matches match email so guys if I add some random text as you guys can see on uh, the Google Chrome I click submit it says invalid email and that's good so the validation type number three that we're going to be doing is kind of straightforward we want to check confirm password so we want to check if the first password and the second password is equal so for that we need the second password as well so I have a class called password2 which I am going to be get and getting in my javascript so it's going to be same as password I'm duplicating that I'll change this to password2 and this to 2 as well so right below in validation 3 we want to check if password.value is equal it's better if you use double equals so pass if it matches password 2 dot value if it does uh, then it's correct so you as we normally do console dot log good else you want to alert uh, the user saying passwords do not match that's exactly what we want to do and I'll just type my name in there Sanjiraj Sanjiraj here I'll click on submit exactly those stuff so I just want to comment that out it might uh, create a problem with the current validation type we're doing confirm password just have the same thing nothing uh, nothing comes because we put an ee dot prevent default see I put some random text here and another random text there if I click on submit passwords do not match so as you guys see these stuff are really like used in real world projects right these are not some made up uh, what do you say made up validation methods so you guys can actually use this in real life in real world projects so if you guys enjoyed this video found something helpful make sure to subscribe to my channel we are almost so close uh, a little bit close to 200 subscribers make sure to subscribe to my channel share this video with your friends click on that like button if you like this video also comment if you have any question and also comment down below what validation method is your favorite and i'll see you guys in the next one